What's up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer to home or wherever you're at watching this video. So I want you to think a little bit. You are on a network right now, unless you've somehow downloaded these videos offline. So you're, you're, you've gotta have an IP address. You've gotta be able to get to the internet, right? So, but how did all that happen? Uh, all that happened automatically using DHCP. So I've, I've got this topology behind me that you can see. The same topology we've been using in this course thus far. Uh, but this time, we're just going to go through the process of DHCP on a typical home or small business network. So I will say that typically this is how it is at home. And this is how it is on a small, medium-sized business network. And that is, the DHCP server is probably running on the router, which is your way to get to the internet. So uh, let me show you this. Right now, my system that I'm creating this video on is not connected to a network. Uh, typically, I am joined wirelessly to my network unless I'm doing a live stream, then I'll physically connect. Uh, we'll show you that later on as well. But when you, when you look at um, the networking involved in Windows, it's usually all centered around the network and sharing center. So I'm clicking on this globe icon and I'm going to click on the name of my wireless network. So I click the exchange and then connect. It should just connect me right away since the wireless profile settings are saved. I didn't have to type in the password, but normally if this is a brand new Wi-Fi network, you're going to have to type in the password. Now, you all, for the most part, know how to do this on your phone, tablet, or, or your laptop, or whatever device you have that's wireless. But in the background, you may not have thought about what happened as you did it. So when I clicked on this, I authenticated using wireless and WPA2 or WPA3. Um, and that authenticated me, and we'll get into wireless later in this course. But for now, just know I authenticated. All that happened before I got an IP address as soon as I authenticate, my computer requests an IP address. It goes through that Dora process we talked about, and it got one. It got one from whatever DHCP server responded first. Right now, the only DHCP server I have running is on my home router. That will change later on in this course. We will shift our DHCP server to another computer and turn it off on the router. But for now, I want to I want to show you how I know this now. Okay, you've got an IP address. That's a good sign. You know the icon changes in Windows. The icon changes in Mac. Great, you're on the network. What do you do about it? Where do you go? How do I confirm all this stuff? Uh, I would go to Command Prompt if you're in Windows Terminal. If you're on Mac, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up Start. Do CMD. Open up command prompt. You'll see command prompt open up behind me. Then do IP config. Now, what IP config is is a command that is quite literally short for I Internet Protocol Configuration. You can hit enter, and notice it pulls up a, 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 some information. Right? It shows your IPv6 address. I promise we'll get to it. And then it shows your IPv4 address. This is a good sign that I have an address that is. 10.388. Now that's my internal network scheme. Earlier we were using 192.168.0. I'll make that distinction later on, but for now just know that you've got a you've got a proper IP address, one that you meant for your system to give you. Now, notice it also gave me a D or a default gateway. Now the default gateway is the IP address for the router and what happens with the default gateway is anytime traffic needs to travel to a network outside of my own, the default gateway is used. So it's essentially like my computer looks at its own what's called routing table. And you can see that by doing netstat-r. And it looks and sees if there's a if there is a default route or if there's a route to the network that you're trying to get to. It looks through, says if there's not, just give it to the default gateway. The default gateway will, 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 will know how to get there. And that'll, that'll be in our WAN series where we talk about what happens after that first default gateway or after that first hop. But for now, just follow along. DHCP gives out a default gateway to devices on the network so they can connect to the internet. Because if, 
if you can have your network up and running, but if DHCP is not leasing out a default gateway address for those clients to point to, then whatever clients don't have the default gateway are going to not be able to get to the internet. Um, another thing it gives me, and I'm gonna show you that when we did IP config, we didn't do enough. So if you do IP config space forward slash all, it will show you a lot more information, right? It'll show you your NIC, the MAC address, all of that. And we'll talk about the MAC address. But for now, I just need you to know it'll also tell you your DNS servers, which these are my DNS servers from my ISP. I could also use Google's, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 and I could use Cloudflare's, which is 1.1.1.1. DNS is another topic. You'll see that in a future video very soon. Um, this, keep in mind, all this has to be leased out from DHCP. DHCP has to give a DNS address, it has to give a default gateway, and it has to give an IP address. Now I will say that this IP address up here, it should not be shared by any other device on the network. But you will notice that the default gateway will be shared by just about all the devices on your network. Uh, so will the DNS servers because they're pointing to another device on the network that is doing that function. So they're pointing to the default gateway, which is doing a uh, routing function. DNS, which is doing a name resolution function. So anytime you look up a name or a website by name, it resolves it to an IP address. So DNS servers are required for that. Um, now, back to DHCP. You may wonder, okay, so then where are these settings? Where, I mean, how could I change them? I mean, you might look at this and see that you have a 192.168.1 or .0, and you're like, well, how did you get yours to be different? Well, I'll show you. Now, this is a word of warning here. Open up a browser. You can log into your router at home um, by typing in, in the browser URL, the IP address of the default gateway. So if you go 10.3. for me 88.1, it's gonna pull up the router's login page. So notice this is a web page. So on your router, a web server is running, meaning you know it's delivering web pages to systems that are running web browsers that are asking for web pages. Remember, going back to that whole idea of client server. The server services request, clients request services. So, so it's in software. So username typically is admin. Now here's a security thing. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you learn from this that you, you need to ch probably change the default login on your router at home. Because uh, if you look at the model of your router and you Google, hey, default login, you're gonna find the password to get in. And typically I've found that it's usually admin username and then the password is admin or the password is actually password. In some occasions there's no password so you could just hit log in and it logs in. What this means is anyone on your network that knows what they're doing can actually log into your router. Um, and if they know, if they're advanced, they can direct traffic wherever they want or even establish a foothold on your network. So in your business or in a small business or in your home, it's very important that you change this. So I have changed this. I'm gonna go ahead and log in now. So I went ahead and logged in using password that's different. You'll notice that there's connected devices. So your router login has some intelligence about your network. It shows the IP schemes, it shows everything you have in place. So what I'm gonna show you here is where you would go to kind of see what you could do, and this is just on my router, but for yours, somewhere there's gonna be a network or LAN settings or local IP network settings that's gonna show you where you can change DHCP settings. So I'm gonna go to local IP network. Notice right here in front of you, these are the DHCP settings, right? So I've got it enabled. When I, when I go to add a, my own server on this network, something that's not on the router, I'm gonna disable this and let the DHCP server handle those requests. But right now, the router handles those requests. 
It's important for you to keep track of this. Let me tell you why. Uh, because someone could have a Raspberry Pi, sneak it into a, ne a business's network, plug it in, and that Raspberry Pi starts leasing out IP addresses. So computers on a business network or on your home network could actually be getting IP addresses from a rogue device. So let me, you know, you might say, well, whatever, what could they do with that? Well, they could actually then turn their Raspberry Pi into the DNS server and the router. So your whole network might be getting out to the internet, but the attacker's device may actually be the middleman capturing all that traffic, still getting your information out to the internet, but being a man in the middle. So from a networking perspective, that's typically how that works. And when that happens, we call that in the textbooks. And, you know, if we want to put a label on it, we put that, at, we call that a DHCP rogue server or rogue DHCP server. So there are safeguards to, against that. One of them being that, you know, your network settings. So um, I would say that the homework after this video is to log into your router at home and check these settings if you haven't already. Change that default username or change the default password at least and maybe even change your IP scheme on your DHCP server. At least be aware of where those settings are and make sure that they're consistent with what's actually happening and what IP addresses your systems are getting. So I'll see you in the next video.